Have you ever heard native English speakers say things like, you should give her a call, or I gave my kids a bath and put them to bed, and wondered why they aren't pronouncing the initial sounds on those pronouns? And how do you know when it's okay to drop an initial sound on a pronoun? Well, stay tuned and we'll explore this topic. Hey there, I'm Lori with Pronunciation Pro and CommuniClinic. In each of my videos, I provide just a snippet of information about American English pronunciation. A snippet is a small amount of something, so I try not to overwhelm you with a bunch of things you have to focus on at once. Instead, we just target one small skill in each video so you can improve your spoken English one baby step at a time. A viewer of mine requested a video explaining the reduction of pronouns. This is something that can be a little confusing for English language learners, so it's a really valuable topic to cover. You'll hear pronoun reductions quite a bit if you listen to native English speakers. When we talk about reducing pronouns, we're talking about eliminating the initial sound of the word. This happens with pronouns that begin with H or TH. And these are the pronouns that frequently get reduced in connected speech. When we eliminate that initial sound, sometimes the vowel changes slightly too. For example, when we reduce the word them, the vowel also gets reduced to a schwa, um. There's almost no tongue movement at all on that vowel. So a phrase like take them will be reduced to take them. You're basically transitioning from that K to the M with as little movement as possible. Take them. Now that we know what reduced pronouns are, let's cover the two rules that govern when you can use them. The first rule is that the pronoun must be an unstressed word within the sentence. Normally, pronouns are unstressed words in our sentences, but there are situations where we would stress a pronoun, and in those situations, you can't drop the initial sound. For example, if I say, I was looking forward to this party, but I didn't know he would be here, the word he in this sentence is emphasized in order to convey my displeasure at seeing that particular person so it can't be reduced. I can't say, I was looking forward to this party, but I didn't know E would be here. Here's another example of a stressed pronoun. If I say, I'm not riding in their car, I'm riding in her car, the word her is emphasized because I'm clarifying whose car I'm riding in. It would be incorrect to say, I'm not riding in their car, I'm riding in er car. So, rule number one, the pronoun has to be unstressed or de-emphasized in the sentence. The second rule is that if you're going to reduce a pronoun, it has to be linked to the word right before it. I can't say, give him the letter. Instead, I have to link it give him the letter. Let's do another example. I can't say, Tom needs to clean his house. Instead, I have to link it. Tom needs to clean his house. That also means that I can't start a sentence with a reduced pronoun because there's no preceding word to link it to. So, rule number two, reduced pronouns must be linked to the word that comes before them. This is very important. Okay, now that you know which pronouns can be reduced and when you can reduce them, let's practice them in some sentences. I'm gonna say the whole sentence and then I'll say just the phrase with the reduced pronoun so you can hear how it's linked to the word before and then I'll say the whole sentence one more time. As always, I encourage you to hit that pause button and try to say the sentence exactly the way I did without changing anything. Ready? Let's do it. 
Pam said I should call her when I get there. Call her. Pam said I should call her when I get there. John decided to have his party on Friday. Have his. John decided to have his party on Friday. We told them they were welcome to join us. Told them. We told them they were welcome to join us. When can he be there? Kenny. When can he be there? He wants me to take him to school. Take him. He wants me to take him to school. So hopefully we've clarified how to use reduced pronouns and when they can be used. I do also want to explain one more thing. It's not required that you reduce your pronouns and your sentences are still correctly pronounced without doing that. There are just some times when reducing the pronoun feels comfortable and natural, and at other times it feels better to fully pronounce that initial sound. You get to be the judge of when you reduce your pronouns as long as you're following the two basic rules that I mentioned. Thanks so much to the viewer who asked me to cover this topic. If you found it helpful, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done that. I plan to keep covering topics that will help you to refine your spoken American English in the upcoming weeks and months. In the meantime, happy practicing, and I'll see you in the next video.